So now on the 5D fungus, we're going to talk about a few different kinds of fungus, right? So these, all these mushrooms you see here, reishi, shiitake, blue oyster, another blue oyster, baby reishi over there, are all saprophytic, which is basically a fancy word to mean decomposer. They're consuming through their substrate. They're kind of, they're breaking it down. They're composting the substrate, right? So they're con all the mycelium going to town, eating, in these cases, sugarcane, bagasso, this case, coffee grounds. Um, it's consuming it. It's using that for food, to gain energy, to launch mushrooms, and to further find more substrate and continue doing its thing. Um, these are all so that you can break down the saprophytic mushrooms into two to three basic categories, primary, secondary, and tertiary, right? So the primary, or most all these mushrooms right here, they're the ones that are breaking down the wood. So wood is one of the harder things. It's kind of the first line of the breakdown in the, in the forest system. And so these mycelium, this, all these different myceliums have the ability, have the enzymes, have the knowledge to be able to break down those complex wood lignans and cellulose and make them bioavailable for themselves and then further down the line. So a secondary saprophytic mushroom would be like a King Safari is a really good example. Um, so that's a, that's a mushroom that will, it can actually break down wood on its own, but it, it more likes kind of like a, a kind of broken down woody environment or it can even live in the, in the soil of them. And it's actually kind of spans through all three. Um, and then, so it's breaking down the wood that has already been broken down. And then tertiary decomposers, tertiary saprophytic mushrooms are like button mushrooms, shaggy manes. So they like a really kind of nitrogen rich environment, manure rich, high nitrogen soil environment. And they're same thing. They got the mycelium they're consuming through breaking down further and consuming the energy and the nitrogen in that substrate. So that's saprophytic. Pretty much all the mushrooms I grow commercially and most all the mushrooms grown commercially cultivated are saprophytic because it's somewhat simple because they're eating things, right? As opposed to the second kind of mushrooms, which are the second kind of fungus, which is called mycorrhizal fungus, a super amazing kind of fungus. You've probably heard of this fungus or maybe you've heard of it. I hope you've heard of it. If not, you're going to right now. Myco is a Latin word meaning fungus. Rhizal, Latin word meaning roots. All right, so mycorrhizal is fungus that coexists with plants and trees and forests, right? It is literally attached to the root system of trees and plants, all right? Um, there's endophytic and ectophytic. Basically, it just means one is wrapping around the roots, and then the other is actually penetrating into the cell walls of the root system. Now, the cool thing is they're learning, they call this the wood wide web, so if you wanna do some Google search and go further in this, it's amazing, all right, what is going on here. But what they're discovering is that symbiotic relationship they are attached but the fungus can't just come up and grab on to the root system it literally has to ask the tree can i uh you know can i latch on we can kind of work together here to do this coexist living thing and the tree's got to be like all right cool and they will let down their cell walls a little bit so the mushroom can latch on and then kind of boom both together now they're like kind of avatar together kind of linked up super awesome all right, and then you can kind of think about them like a root system of a tree only goes so far. But now that it's linked up to mycelium, that mycelium can spread a long, long ways through the forest system. And not only is it linked to the one tree, but it's linked to multiple trees, to multiple species. And there's probably multiple mycorrhizal funguses linked. So you have this like crazy neural network of mycelium linking all these trees, all these plants in a forest system. One of the coolest guys on the planet, Paul Stamets, he calls it nature's internet. Because it's exactly that. It's this multi-linked network of information passing. It's shocking, all right? So what's going on there? The, the fungus is getting the simple sugars from the tree, the excess simple sugars, and in return, the the mycelium, since it is linked through all the trees, is one, you know, kind of equalizing the forest. It's, it's the equalizing equilibrium of the forest. And, you know, maybe one tree is super shaded and dark and not getting a whole lot of light or energy or water. Um, the mycelium can take excess energy from a tree that's right by the river, getting crazy amounts of excess water, crazy amount of excess sun. And it can literally funnel the excess energy from that tree to the little sapling in the shade trying to grow. So it's equilibrium. It can also break down and make 
nutrients that are in the soils and in the in the mulch layers bioavailable and channel them and make them accessible to the plants also it can make minerals accessible to the plants mushrooms have acids and enzymes that can break down rocks and minerals and make them bioavailable uptake them and give them to the plants and it's all about the trace mineral folks all right and so mycelium mycorrhizal fungus so freaking cool I can't really touch them. I can't really grow them in a lab setting because there's such a symbiotic complex linked up relationship. If you wanted to grow them, people have been doing experiments where they plant trees at the base of healthy other trees so that, you know, the, the mycelium will go into the root system, then they can replant those in their orchards. That's one way you can buy mycorrhizal spores to put in your garden. Um, you can take soil from healthy environments and help transplant that to kind of get mycorrhizal going in your garden system. Super awesome thing to do. And super clutch because all healthy forest systems have a mycorrhizal network. Cool. Some of the types that you might know, boletes, also called borchinis, chanterelles, um, black truffles, I believe, are uh, uh, part of a mycorrhizal fungus. These give you an idea of some of the, the types. So, moving right along. I could stay on all these topics for a long time, but we're just trying to give you an overview of the different kinds of fungus. Uh, so that was mycorrhizal, that was saprophytic. Number three, parasitic fungus, all right? You know, like, some people kind of think of parasitic fungus as bad, but in some ways, it's, it's, it's kind of like a forest fire is to a forest. If things get out of whack, a parasitic fungus can come in, kind of consume an over unbalanced part of the forest and kind of help equalize just like a, for, uh, just like a forest fire. Um, also, there's parasitic fungus, uh, parasites, insects all right super interesting cordyceps one of the main health medicinal mushrooms there is is actually parasitizes insects cordyceps sinensis one of the more famous ones it lives above 9,000 feet in the himalayas and it consumes and kills caterpillars and freaks a mushroom out of its abdomen i think and its head or it might be its anus and its head it's different there's cordyceps and parasitizing insect fungus in the jungle consuming plants consuming grubs super cool again mr paul stamets he's got ideas and ways and patents to use this as a bio insecticide he actually saved his house from termites using fungus super cool check out his books mycelium running or the six ways mushrooms can save the world if you want to know a little more information on that super cool so that's a little idea actually the largest organism on the planet is a parasitic fungus in oregon i believe um they can take aerial photos of it just decimating a giant forest equalizing you know imbalances and then basically turning trees back into nutrients to regrow the forest similar to a fire in that they're breaking down and making nutrients but different maybe better there's no better there's no worse it's just all happening um the fourth kind of mushroom i want to talk about is endophytic all right endophytic mushrooms are super cool we barely have much knowledge on them i would like to experiment more if i have time all right is um they kind of are a cross between saprophytic and mycorrhizal in that they are symbiotic with plants they can live on the surface of, of leaves they can live in the trunks they can live in the root systems and they kind of their mycelium moves through the cell walls of the plants not harming them and they can kind of provide a protective layer on the leaf system or or the root system super cool and then eventually when the plant dies then they'll consume and sometimes fruit and pass on themselves that way really amazing because there's been a, a little bit of experimentation on them of using them as like actually like a fungicide like getting them embedded on a plant to protect them from like a parasitic fungus attacking the plant um they've also had um luck testing them with like heat or drought resistant like they're growing they're using thermophilic endophytic mushrooms and putting them onto plants and then growing them at crazy high temperatures in the in the arabian desert and they're getting watermelons and tomatoes and crazy stuff at like 110 120 degrees it's wild again it's in mycelium running check it out super cool so those are the basic four different kinds of mushrooms kind of give you an idea but again mostly in in the commercial world what we're going to be doing hopefully you know we can span into some other ways we're going to be talking about saprophytic signing off check us out 5d lifestyles we're talking about fungus we're talking about food we're talking about all kinds of stuff so tune in watch us check it out thanks for checking in